Thank you very much, Joe. And next, I'd like to introduce you to Vicky Parker. Vicky is an intuitive artist, writer, speaker, and theatre practitioner in Brighton and Hove. She speaks and blogs regularly about her lived experience and personal journey with the arts. Vicky is the founder of Soul Sofa, a multi-arts retreat initiative dedicated to promoting arts engagement in the community. And I think something we need to thank her for, she's the curator of the Brighton Creativity and Wellbeing Week, of which this is one of the events of that um, series. So Vicky, welcome. And your question, you've got two questions, interestingly. <laughs> I've sneaked another one. Um, <laughs> What's next after social prescribing and what is the role of the individual in their own well-being? Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Alistair. So, hello, everybody. Um, I'd like to start with a quote, which is one of my favourite quotes, which is that art is a wound turned into light. And I think for me that that symbolises a healing journey. And on my own healing journey, I feel very, very lucky to be here because I could have been a very different person sitting in front of you considering the family dynamics that I grew up with. But I also like to think that the last stage of healing is the moment you're able to share the wisdom of that. And I think that I'm here now being able to speak like this as an artist and as somebody who creates events to plant seeds for other people in their own healing journey. I feel that um, some of that wound has been turned into light. And actually, I can only speak from my own experience. Um, and I speak of the wounding of families in crisis. And I can speak from my experience about the role of medication that happened within my family, particularly with my mum. And I can also speak from my personal experience of the legacy on my developing nervous system in terms of surviving in a toxic family situation. I'd also like to speak about my experience and my arts process because I was also very lucky that even though there was a backdrop of toxicity for me growing up, there was also an enormous amount of arts engagement that I was able to access. So I was an actor from age 10. I was drawing and painting and dancing and singing from age three to four. So I've done it all of my life and it's been an absolute lifesaver for me. And so I want to tell you a little bit about that and some of the examples of the work that I've done to be able to support my own well-being. I also would like to say that I'm really interested in the pathology of silencing and the silencing of people's voices, because that's quite relevant to the way that my family dynamic was. And also the devastating effects of the loss of autonomy of a human being within a toxic family situation. So just a little bit of context then. Um, my family dynamic was that a father with a narcissistic personality disorder and a mother with anxiety, depression, and suicidal behavior. And for me as a child, I was a mediator between the two of them, and I was also kind of a carer for my mother's mental health and held in subtle responsibility for her mental health. So that was my legacy growing up. Um, but my symptoms also as an adult developed then into having my own anxiety and depression and having to recover from complex post-traumatic stress disorder and trying to understand and piece together why the um, survival strategy of dissociation that I had to use in order to stay alive became something that was detrimental to me as an adult and needed to have some kind of shift, otherwise I wouldn't have survived. So when I talk about my artwork, and that includes either acrylic painting or mindful doodling and pencil drawing. Um, I'm talking about my focus on reimagining a sense of my fragmented and dissociated self. I'm talking about a conscious awareness of relocating and reclaiming parts of myself that were lost in that process. And with every intuitive piece of art that arrives, it's like they're channeled, it's like there's another window on parts of the self that you didn't know were there, but that were there in the unconscious that have been fueling where you're going in your journey, but also needed to come together as a whole into that integration process. Because I really truly believe that if we don't come together as a whole, then we're not speaking as our full selves. And I want to be able to speak with more of me, because the more of me that's in my decisions, the more autonomy I have over my own well-being and my own future and my own life. And also within my process of drawing, it's about the process of self-acceptance and honoring every mark that I make. And when I teach art and when I facilitate my Doodle Cafe, one of the central points of that is that it doesn't matter what it looks like. 
It mu what matters is the process and what matters is the value that you place on the mark that you can make on the paper as a symbolism for the mark that you can make in your life and in the world. And um, also, connecting to the mindfulness of that kind of process, it's a really fantastic way into regulating a nervous system that was in crisis but now isn't. So, I am no longer silenced, but a lot of my healing journey has about been healing the shame and the guilt from a toxic family. But now I'm not afraid to share my artwork because I'm not afraid anymore. And the other point of example that I did was because I've been a theatre practitioner for a long time and an actor for a long time, I chose to move from that situation where I was having a private conversation with myself through the art to taking it into a more public arena. And whereas before, the theatre roles that I'd always adopted when I was a kid and, and, and as an adult, um, I've always known about the cathartic release of playing evil and vengeful characters. You would have always seen me playing something like that. And I took great relish in that. And I didn't realize that what I was doing was putting the intensity of my experience into a cathartic role and maintain the, an maintaining the anonymity of the truth of the family dynamic. Because actually the belief system that went in was that if you tell the truth, you will be abandoned or you'll be annihilated. And that was a real primal fear that if I told the truth that that would happen. So the healing process has largely had to center on managing the fear of telling the truth. But I did tell the truth and I wrote a one woman show and I called it Voice and I performed it in the Brighton Fringe two years ago. And that was a real conscious decision to use the skills that I had to be in role as myself to tell the story of a fragmented self through the use of storytelling, stand-up comedy, movement, and blues singing, because there really is nothing like the blues for uniting the audience in their own silent shadows. So that's how I performed it. And I wanted to have this blues inquiry into a fragmented mind, and I wanted to try and put it out there, how to delicately untangle the roots of trauma. And that's what the show was about. And that was what I did because I wanted the truth to be witnessed and I wanted to challenge overtly the belief that I'd internalized that I wasn't allowed to do it. And so I did it. And it was an enormous shift within, an enormous energetic shift. And it had repercussions, both negative and positive afterwards, but I don't have any regrets about performing it because it was part of my own healing to do that. And um, so, yeah, so you need to, I think that, in, in confronting your shadow self, then you're confronting the idea that you are living with fear, but you don't have to live with fear. And I think fear is very toxic in the body. And I think that disease or disease and emotional distress thrives on fear. And I think that at the root of you know, well-being is that ability to have a connection with yourself, to have a balance in your own nervous system, to have an awareness of what's happening, mind, body, and spirit, and to have that awareness of what you need for your own well-being. And I feel that the autonomy and the agency to be able to do that is what's necessary for the individual. I'm very interested in the social pres prescribing because there is a lot of trust in doctors. There's a lot of trust in the medical profession even though I personally didn't have a lot of trust in the medical profession growing up. But I can see that people need to have that mindset shift, that they need to be signposted in order to see what it's all about to engage in the arts. But I think that once you've taken them to the door, I think that you can have a radical self-responsibility for becoming aware of what you need and where you are on that continuum of what you actually, can you even identify that? And then, choose creativity for yourself. And so that takes me to the last comment about my, my work is, my work builds my own resilience and it builds my own self-worth and my own self-acceptance. And that's why I continue to put that out there. But my work also plants seeds for others to be able to do the same and begin their own healing journey. And so I want people to know that they can have and give themselves permission to be well. And I want them to take that radical self-responsibility and remember their own inner wisdom and come away from a victim consciousness and come away from the idea that they feel they need to be fixed or saved by anybody external to them. So I would like you to go away with the idea that you can answer the quiet whisper within yourself and any creative solutions that can amplify that whisper would be greatly welcomed. Thank you.
Thank you very much to Vicky. And then finally, um, I'd like to introduce you to Duncan Bullen. Duncan is Deputy Head of the School of Art at the University of Brighton, where he has responsibility for leading research and enterprise. And Duncan's question is, how is arts practice research engaging with health and well-being? OK, um, everybody, I'm, as I'm from the School of Art, I couldn't really um, let this pass without actually using some visuals to illustrate some of the, the, um, the work that's going on. Um, so um, this is a kind of area that's really, really kind of dear to my heart. And, and we're kind of really beginning to build a kind of culture of, of research in the School of Art. And, um, and one of the real strands there is around health and well-being and how arts practices can engage um, in, in that kind of area. So I'm, what I'm going to do is just whiz you through um, uh, a few examples of, of work that's taken place um, with colleagues, not just in the School of Art, but across um, the university. Um, and to just to sort of uh, give um, an indication of the kind of work we're doing. And those examples will be from um, uh, work in, 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 in PhD, uh, work with undergraduate students, and work with um, um, uh, academic members of staff. So let me just sort of, um, and before I uh, uh, do that, so the, the areas that we're, we're kind of really beginning to sort of develop work in around um, how can applications of drawing um, uh, support health and well-being, um, how working with um, materials uh, and, and making uh, can be applied to health and well-being, uh, how storytelling um, really begins, you can begin to engage with storytelling and build and learn from sort of um, previously and existing communities and, and develop new collaborations. Uh, we're really interested in how design can, can um, work for, for change and, and, and present new insights into health, well-being, and approaches to, to practices in care, and how sort of creative methodologies um, and can, can work with a kind of critical psychology to, to explore the, these themes. So um, the first example I'm, I'm showing is from a, um, a student who, well, is a member of staff now, who runs our Sustainable Design MA. Um, and he, his PhD, as it says up here, um, examined the role of design in helping to improve uh, people with rheumato rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and he, he had a whole series of design propositions that he kind of worked through um, and hope leading to people sort of engaging with um, um, therapeutic exercise. A current um, um, PhD student of Tom's is, is, um, is Sally Sutherland. Um, and she is looking into, um, into, into motherhood and breastfeeding. And, um, and the, 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 really the adverse kind of um, um, conditions of health and well-being of the mother and child, and um, as it says upon the slide, um, the, the birth rates um, or breastfeeding rates after six months are amongst the lowest in the world. So she's looking into this, and this illustration really kind of um, highlights some of the, the um, I guess, the, the hypocrisy that we, of, our, of our society and how we, how we live. So she's um, a current uh, PhD student engaging in this and, and is, is um, working with Tom, who his work on, on rheumatoid arthritis. This is a project that, that many of you in the room, I, I imagine, are familiar with. It's a project that was, that was um, worked with the NHS Trust. Um, two colleagues from, from the School of Art, um, uh, Philippa Lyon and Jane Fox, both worked with, with groups on this, um, this project. And it was, it, was a, it was a drawing project that worked right through various, um, um, I think, right across the southeast, I think, and, um, and worked in, into, into um, people working in, with people in, in care homes and across into, into other areas. Um, Brighton um, is unique, I think, in the sense that, as in, in the university, that we, we also have um, Brighton and Sussex uh, Medical School linked to the, to, the, to the university. 
and the collaborations that we can work with, with, with people from that, that, that school are, are really tremendous. Somebody, just before I came up, was talking about a project that worked with um, between um, the, the Brighton and Sussex Medical School and the School of Art around um, scabies. Um, I haven't illustrated that project, but it really, again, another really good example. This one is a project that our undergrad students across uh, our craft-based courses and students from medicine worked on and worked in, in the kind of anatomy labs, uh, looking and, and understanding the human body. And, and what we, we are at the moment developing, uh, a kind of, again, a closer relationship with, with the medical school and the anat and, uh, anatomy lab and to, to develop um, further projects, both in terms of research and uh, educational um, um, uh, facilities for students to work together. Students from t very different disciplines coming together, working side by side. And my final example are uh, two students who graduated from our product design course, um, I think just last year. Um, Eli and Pete, uh, yeah, they, they studied product design last year. And they are currently working um, up in our Cockcroft building. Uh, they have a year's placement up there, and they're working in, in, the, in the area. And they, they, um, they collaborated during their studies. And I think, again, they worked with people from the, from the medical school to design um, uh, a wheelchair to enable people to, to paint and to draw. Um, so they describe it as, as um, between a ballpoint pen and a paintbrush, it's, and it's a device that attaches to wheelchairs, and so you, and you can paint on the floor. They've been part of various Draw to Perform um, uh, festivals here in, in, in Brighton, and they're currently in a position where this is being sort of um, developed further and hopefully kind of painted to them and so forth. Um, they, they, they're, um, when they wrote to me about this, they said that they, they work from a philosophy which is um, art is a fundamental human right and should be accessible to all. And that's where I will end my brief talk. Thank you. Thank you very much, Duncan, and thank you to all the panel for, I think, what was a very stimulating and very diverse perspectives um, reflecting on art and health. So this is the point where we want you to be doing some thinking and some um, coming up with ideas. So in Brighton and Hove, we have this idea that we want to be a centre of excellence around arts and health. So we'd like you to kind of think about what you've heard this evening, but also bring your own experience to the table as well, and what you think you can do to progress that. So I'll throw it over to you for 20 minutes discussion, which will be convened by your chairs, chairs on your table. So thank you.